Time now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys. Hey Tony. Tony, what's up, man? Happy delisting. I didn't celebrate Happy President's Day yesterday, but um, I'm definitely celebrating the delisting today. <laughs> I've I've completely ignored it to be honest. Uh, focused focused on other things. Focused on fa- yeah. family time, which has been quite nice. Yeah. yeah. But it's. I mean, I, I'm not really seeing much of an impact, which I think I think I'd uh, chalk that up as good news. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I was watching last because I I didn't realize the actual time until I looked like yesterday afternoon. And I'm like, oh, it's o three hundred UTC, which is ten p.m. EST. So I was like up just like watching it and i was honestly surprised i thought it was going to go down a lot harder as it was getting towards the end um stuff Mm -hmm. was getting finished but no honestly it it was it was chilling and then it made a little bit of a recovery which is nice yeah so now if you go on binance and you look for monero it's not gonna be there anymore it's gonna show that it's uh unlisted and uh then we have this post from untraceable he says Binance will release Monero in less than 12 hours. Binance also has Monero withdrawals halted for the past several hours, citing low hot wallet balance. Um, why would they not have all of their XMR and hot wallet knowing their delisting schedule manipulation till the last minute? And uh, here's a picture. Then we have uh, Binance posting a picture of a uh, Binance hat at the beach. And if you zoom in, in the water, you can see a lot of Monero from today. A lot of boating accidents right there. <laughs> and um, then if you want to take your Monero and put it somewhere else, you can put it into, into Cape Wallet. They wrote, uh, today's the last day to withdraw your XMR from Binance. Move your coins into non-custodial wallet like Cape Wallet for more sovereignty, privacy, and security. So if you choose to move it into a different place, um, Cake Wallet is a very good option. Um, Unfortunately, during that time when I had tweeted that um, from the account, I think that was when they had started closing withdrawals again. And I don't think they opened it again uh, at all last night. So basically everyone had to trade for something else on Binance. Yeah, uh, manipulation from the last moment. uh then moving on so actually this is this is really cool um the vt nerd um monero fund has been funded fully and i think two weeks ago um it probably had two thousand dollars and now it's fully funded uh two weeks later so uh that is that is, that is very good to see so vt nerd is going to be working um it's going to put in a lot of hours to improve the security performance and usability with an end goal of helping to broaden the user base Okay, moving on, we have a, uh, a hackathon this year for MoneroCon. So if you go on the website, uh, they wrote calling all hackers to join us in Prague this summer, uh, 7th and 9th of June, 2024 at Paralelny Polis for MoneroCon's first hackathon focused on improving the security, privacy, decentralization and user experience of uh, Monero. The best code is gonna win 2000 euros, best design 1.5. Uh, thousand uh, euro and then most innovative is gonna win the same as the best design um the price pool may increase depending on num- number of sponsors that they can get by the event uh, date and the target number of hackers is 100 so if you're interested uh, make sure that you go and and you sign up for this um you can work in a team you can work in solo so you can choose um yeah but that's very cool that they have a hackathon for for this year and then also uh, Monero wrote uh, if you're interested in sponsoring the, the hackathon or other areas of the Monero uh, conference, you know, please email orga at monerocon.com. Then we have a post from Peter Sweden. Uh, the countries that have now joined the farmers protest, as you guys may know, uh, farmers are protesting around in Europe against the climate agenda. Uh, I think pretty much first it started, started with uh, Netherlands and it was Germany. But now uh, it's Poland, Lithuania, Romania, France, Scotland, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Greece, Britain, uh, Belgium, Ireland, Czech Republic, Wales, and probably more. So all of Europe is saying no to the climate agenda. These protests are historic. Yet the mainstream media has been mostly um, ignoring it. 
Uh, so this is very, very important and um, very, very big news. Uh, then this is the <laughs> this is the first photo of uh, <clears throat> Sam Bankman uh, freed in jail. It just got released. Doesn't look like he's having the best <laughs> the best of time in jail. This is such a great picture. Yeah. Is that wait? Is, that, chance, real? You watch the, uh, is that real? Yeah, that's real. Uh, did no, you watch no, the video oh that Tiffany uh, put out? Um, she's referenced in the. Um... Oh yeah, see, uh, photo credit Tiffany Fong. She put out a video talking to the dude standing right next to a Sam because he got out of prison and he gave her this photo. Oh really? Yeah, it's a it's a funny little video. Oh wow! Wow. Am so I able it's to real. Find it? On this link, or uh, it might be on there. Let me find it, and I can send it to you if it's not on there. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, but what? At first, I thought it wasn't real, but um... no, it's real. It's it's startling. Yeah, yeah. He's he's in jail for life, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's charged. Oh, seven. I don't, I don't think it would. I don't know. I don't want to speak. I forget what his. Uh... Sentences, yeah. Final sentence was. Then let's talk about uh, Havino's council vote. So um, they wrote, this is from the core team. Hello all, this is information on registering to vote for Havino's council's third, possibly fourth and fifth seats. Current requirements to register to vote are a working email and a known online screen name from one of the given services in the form. Um, the polls will take place using the CIVS voting software and will take place in two parts. There'll be a primary election with a right in and then the top five ranked candidates will be nominated to the general election where the winners will be chosen from the top three. Uh, emails will be sent out from the uh, CIVS platform once the polls have started. And fortunately, for... registration is already closed. <laughs> and, yeah, registration is already closed, <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, to answer, what is um, what is what exactly was that all about? So there, I haven't been following that closely. So there are like okay, a yeah, committee so, who's then uh, going to make decisions on, on what to do with the treasury. That's the money that's collected. Yeah. So Havino Council has two people already, and this this last vote is for one to potentially three seats on the council from chosen from the Monero community. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so there's there's other seats that aren't chosen yeah, by like, the Monero community. Yeah. So like uh, Woodser and and Vic are two. Right. Okay. Okay. So trying to get some more and, that the community, uh, the Monero community, has appointed. And then that committee w would be the ones that are kind of dictating the the, the future of Havino, and then deciding where the funds are going as well. I know. Yeah, I think it's treasury talk. stuff. I don't know specifically all what it is. Okay. All right, you'll have to have a show on that soon. I mean, this is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about Monero getting delisted from Binance. Uh, new decentralized uh, ways of obtaining Havino. Monero are are blossoming, and here's Havino about to about to begin, right? I think it's it's kind of an any day now thing, right? In terms of yeah, it actually being live, it's getting close. Yeah. Uh, which is why they wanted to get this voting out super fast because everything's like starting to move pretty quickly. To answer fairly reasonable investors' question real quick, could a Pi 3B run a full node on its own with a 1TB SD card or 200 powered? Yeah, I think you could. Um, it might struggle a little bit, but I think you could run a full node on a Pi 3B. Don't quote me on that, but I think you could. Yeah, I'm not technical enough to to say, but I would think you could. We could ask the guys when they're when they're up here for Noto. Yeah. Um, Go let's ahead, play the next video. So this is about um, forcing miners to censor. So let's go ahead and play this video.
So in the DeFi report that you mentioned, we highlighted uh, lots of different types of technical features and compliance controls that can be built in at different layers of the ecosystem that could for focus, for example, at the network layer where miners exist. Um, a good place to start might be something like sanctions. OFAC has already stated in their compliance guidance that miners may already have sanction screening obligations. So a good place to start right now before imposing new AML obligations on miners or those who exist at the network layer could be to enforce the existing obligations when they, when they validate transfers going to sanctioned actors like Lazarus Group. <laughs> okay. Um, that's wonderful. That's the, that's the hearing I was talking about with Body. Um, I listened to the whole thing. Monero was mentioned by name. That's kind of, oh, kind of one, of, one of the firsts that I've heard Monero being mentioned by name in the, in the halls of Congress. Um, was it yeah, Tony, out there. Tony I, se I sent you a link. Oh, is that yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, this one. Yep. Yeah. I don't, you could try playing at the... Let me see. I can look for... Um, try playing around two hours and 40 minute mark. Two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, it's like right here? Oh, no. Uh, no, further back, like two hours and 40 minute. Is that... Yeah. Okay. One person on that Zoom was it apparently a deep fake, and it did the transfer, and the money's gone, and so that you know that is an emerging threat, and the tool at hand for that is a secure digital ID, and that has to be you know it is going to be essential, I believe, for just preventing fraud in a wide area. Um, could you, um, in the one minute left, sort of walk me through, you know, when where where things are getting lost right now? When the Koreans, uh, North Koreans, um, you, know, you know, they grab your computer, they, um, you know, they encrypt your files, and your screen has this a message on it. They've right, you've been hit by ransomware. You conclude the best thing to do is pay it off, and so you pay it off. And at some point, the North Koreans get to use that for buying supplies for nuclear weapons or missiles. And so where in the chain does it break right now? Um, does anyone wants to pick it up? Um, I'll, try, I'll, I'll take that one uh, to at yeah. least start. Um, it, it breaks down at the cybersecurity layer. We have to stop these hacks from happening in the first place. Okay, no, that's, I, I don't believe you're ever going to stop ransomware. You just, you, you're screwed, you've decided to pay it off. Then where, and so you, you go to your, your Bitcoin ATM, you buy your Bitcoin ATM, you pay it off, you transfer it to the wallet. And then where, how do they run and hide? Sure, and, that, and that's when law enforcement typically gets involved to start to- where it's, All right, so but where does it break? Where does, it's obviously not working. The Koreans are firing a lot of missiles. Where is it currently breaking? Anyway, if you could, this is, I'm over time here. So, but if you could just come up with, you know, where, just walk it through from the point that someone, you know, gets some Bitcoin, pays off the ransomware, and then magically it appears in a bank account that the North Koreans use to buy new missile equipment. Where the, is it currently? The key breaking? there at the end of the day, and I'll just, just very, very briefly, is to stop their ability to off-ramp those funds. Mm -hmm. And that's why so much of what we talked about today becomes so important to ensure compliance, to uh, implementation of FATF standards on those points where North Korea can actually off-ramp the funds. Today, we're able to track and trace those funds relatively successfully on blockchains. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen's time has expired. I'd like to thank our witnesses for their testimony today. Without objection, all members. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing was pretty, pretty juicy. There were some juicy parts. Um, or if you go back. There's no transcript because I wish that I can look it up like a transcript and just look up on there, um, but it's not available now. Yeah, kind of scroll back to uh, the first third. That guy. Um, no, Mr. Sherman? No, no, no. Well, he's he's infamously a crypto hater, this guy. If you just want to hear oh, yeah, bash, bash yeah. crypto, you can, you can play him. This guy, this guy. This guy, I think, is the one who mentioned Monero by name. Uh, you could try to get his opening remarks. Try to get this guy, the guy you have on screen right now, Mr. Mm -hmm. Grant. Yep. Try to get, uh, get his opening remarks. So go in the beginning. That's yeah, 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 yeah. So after that guy, I think, yeah. Chairman Hill, some Lynch, and members of the subcommittee. 
Thank you for this opportunity to testify today. My name is Grant Rabin, and I serve as the Director of Financial Crimes Legal at Coinbase, America's largest digital asset exchange. Ooh. Lead the team of lawyers at Coinbase responsible for anti-money laundering, sanctions, and law enforcement matters. We work collaboratively with law enforcement to, to keep our platform and the broader crypto ecosystem safe. I have spent most of my professional life prosecuting financial crimes and stopping the bad guys from using technology to hurt Americans. I joined Coinbase after a decade as a federal prosecutor in which I focused on the intersection of money laundering and cybercrime. While assigned to lead a suspicious activity report joint federal task force, I first saw reports coming in about Bitcoin related transactions in 2013. I initiated some of the federal government's earliest criminal investigations into crypto related money laundering including partnering with FinCEN on one of its first crypto enforcement actions. I also organized and taught at some of the Department of Justice's first national trainings on crypto crime for prosecutors and federal agents. I am most proud of my work as a leader of the takedown of the world's largest dark web marketplace, Alphabay, which was described as the most successful cybercrime prosecution in the history of the internet, and for which I was given the Attorney General's Award, the FBI Director's Award, and the, uh, the Director of National Intelligence's Meritorious Service Award. This, man this case Monero. in analytics and uncovering cyber criminals and involved the federal government's first ever seizures of Monero and Zcash. I came to coin. Oh, there we go. There it is. Oh, there it is. This... <laughs> well, let's go back. Let's it's, go it's back. An important, it's an important moment, guys. I've been listening for, for years, waiting for them to mention Monero in Congress. I don't th I think this might be the first. I think this is the first. It was I, I want to go back. Name. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but. What's that little shield pin he's wearing? I was going to say, uh, is it from Zcash? <laughs> deep, deep state shit. Right, body? Get body up here. Get body up here. <laughs> I want to hear body. <laughs> I want to hear him say Monero one more time before. This case revealed the power of blockchain analytics in uncovering cyber criminals and involved the federal government's first ever seizures of Monero and Zcash. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is the first time for me too when I hear um, yeah. I hear an actually mention. You, you could but, you could let him uh, let him go a little bit more. Let him let him talk a little bit more. Let him cook. <laughs> let him cook. I came to Coinbase to continue this work. Coinbase is is a company laser focused on being the most secure, trusted, and compliant platform in crypto. Our mission is to protect our customers' crypto and the country. Just like me, hundreds of former national security and compliance professionals have joined the fight for the security of crypto in America. My career has shown me the breadth of tools Congress has given to law enforcement and how they can be applied to new technology and how to make crypto safer. As described in detail in my written testimony, there are four main points that I would like to leave you with today. First, there is a national security imperative to get this right. Keeping crypto here in America ensures compliance, enhances law enforcement, and secures the financial system. The reverse is true. If the pipes and plumbing of a technology that moves value flow elsewhere, the U.S. government loses its ability to shape it. Second, Coinbase has invested heavily in its anti-money laundering program and global intelligence teams that partner with global law enforcement on a daily basis. We are constantly working to leverage new technology to establish a program that rivals any traditional financial institution. We have also led industry-wide anti-money laundering compliance initiatives. We take our obligation to protect Americans seriously. Third, sanctions evasion, terrorist financing, and criminal activity is concentrated with offshore platforms. Law enforcement should use all of the extensive legal tools at its disposal to police those offshore actors today. If additional funding is needed so law enforcement can prioritize crypto, Congress should provide it immediately. Fourth, Coinbase is supportive of legislation provided, providing targeted additional tools that will make crypto a safer place. But it is important that Congress be thoughtful about its approach. As this committee knows, Coinbase is held to robust anti-money laundering and know your customer standards like any American financial institution. Our work is further bolstered by a characteristic unique to crypto, the public ledger of transactions within the blockchain, which let us trace illicit funds and track those trying to send or receive to a bad actor or a sanctioned party. In this way, crypto is compliance on steroids. It allows for a new dimension of compliance, public ledgers that enable visibility into what users do. That's, on. that's what I wanted. That crypto is compliance Digital on steroids. Go, go, play that again. Bring that back a little bit. Yep. Yep. Actor or a sanctioned party. 
In this way, crypto is compliance on steroids. <laughs> it allows for a new dimension of compliance, public ledgers that enable visibility into what users do on and off our platform. In traditional finance, one bank has no visibility into what their customers do at another bank. However, in crypto, public ledgers provide immediate information about what customers are doing across the entire technology, which creates better investigative tools that can then be used by law enforcement and compliance departments. Case in point, OFAC has sanctioned around 560 crypto addresses in total, but Coinbase has identified more than 8 million through our proactive investigations. Wow. By extrapolating out from these ground truth OFAC addresses, we're able to stop the flow of funds to bad actors in real time. While onshore regulated exchanges invest heavily in compliance to stop bad activity, criminals continue to seek out offshore platforms without those same robust anti-money laundering programs and controls. Those offshore entities often play jurisdictional whack-a-mole, attempting to avoid tough anti-money laundering rules and expecting that regulators won't care. The U.S. government should use all of its existing tools to go after these platforms. Many recent enforcement and actions in the crypto anti-money laundering space are good news. Accountability should happen. Additionally, regulating the broader crypto market through the market structure and stablecoin bill this committee has passed on a bipartisan basis would help create better guidance for the industry and encourage the industry to develop here in America. And while cybersecurity is an issue much bigger than crypto, additional cyber measures and standards would make crypto less vulnerable to cyber attack. In closing, Coinbase is committed to working with Congress and law enforcement to add illicit financial terrorism. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've been just hearing a lot of like they just kind of show up in places, a lot of advertisements for Monero, you know? Mm -hmm. Crypto is compliance like on right steroids. This is just this guy's like the final boss for Monero. <laughs> He's like the. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is enemy number one. He's coming after us, guys. He's coming after us. Well, he, he put it so well in the words that the fact that in traditional banking, they only have your information in that specific bank. But yeah. what most crypto allows you, allows people he, to do. He, understand, he understands Bitcoin very well. He does. Very this well. is what I tell people. I'm like, you, you realize that Bitcoin's like in a lot of ways worse than just using like a credit card or your bank account. For yeah. Stuff. Yes. It's it a is. surveillance dystopia in the making, right? It's like the, the perfect tool. It's the panopticon. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so obviously he doesn't like, you know, he, he's, he's one of these guys that sees Monero as a tool for mixing, for washing, right? He sees it as a tool that's used for money laundering. It's evil. The boogeyman. It's a free speech tool, guys. Free speech tool. We got 72 people on, uh, like and share guys and subscribe. Give us a, we get, we gotta get those numbers up. We're st we still haven't yeah. hit 10k subscribers on YouTube yet. We're close. We're close. Yeah, subscribe, guys. Hit that little bell thing, even if you don't use this shit. Comment. Comments <laughs> are good for the algorithms. Just yeah. you know, throw anything in there. Obviously, try to make it relevant, but we'll take anything. Um, yeah. Tony, we got a lot more news. Yeah, uh, we got two more things, and uh, this yeah, one yeah, is yeah. all right. Keep, keep going. So, European Court of Human Rights declares a backdoor encryption is illegal so um, the european court of human rights has ruled that laws requiring crippled encryption and extensive data retention violate the european convention on human rights um on tuesday stating that the contested legislation providing for the retention of all internet communications of all users the security services direct access to the data stored without adequate safeguards against abuse and the requirement to decrypt Encrypted communications as applied to end to end encrypted communications cannot be regarded as necessary in a democratic society. So basically, them breaking into your conversations, the government's breaking into your conversations, as far as I understand, this should be um, illegal, which uh, um, they, they use the excuse that. Um, they have these back doors so that they uh, they try to track all these criminals and. Um, uh, capture them and you know um which you know it's nice but actually what they use it for is uh to spy on everybody so um is it going to be illegal that's that's going to be interesting to see 
Well, it's it's good news to see them declaring it illegal, right? It's good to see that that yeah. that that culture is there, um, right? So step in the right direction. Um, keep going, keep going. Uh, this is this is the last thing. So uh, Canada is banning the flipper zero and similar devices. It's likely only a matter of time before we see these devices under legislative scrutiny in the U.S. This begs the question, are cyber weapons protected under the, under the 2A, Second Amendment? Oh, okay. I actually just saw this today. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So uh, if you're buying a flipper, use Monero to do so, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, I saw somebody well, selling a flipper on um, Monero Market. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Yep. that's> awesome. <laughs> yeah um yeah but that that's that's all the news for uh this week that's such a canada thing remsey oh you know what uh speaking of new, bring up monerotopia bring up monerotopia.com remsey we absolutely want coinbase to list xmr owning your own keys will never be mainstream and we need companies like coinbase as a custodian yeah i don't know i feel like out. binance have proved this is a bigger issue than it like than like benefit it gives because Binance having Monero on there, like most of the people that bought Monero on there was just on Binance. So they were just pay like it was just being held in paper by Binance. It wasn't real. And I could see like Coinbase, like maybe they're better, right? Maybe they'll provide like a an on off ramp for Monero, but this is it's not the ideal way um, for it to happen. We need to like work on like new ways to on ramp to Monero, which I think for a long time was going to be like DEXs from other coins at this point. Yeah. Was Rumsey being sarcastic though? I don't know. Rumsey, you could jump up <laughs> and uh, give us your full take on that. Um, yeah. So Monerotopia, we're going to officially announce it right now. Here it is Monerotopia 2024, Buenos Aires, Argentina, November 1st through the 3rd. So still a long way off. But that will come up quickly. So it's a big trip for many people. Uh, a lot of people, I think, that tune into the show don't necessarily live in Argentina or, or, or near the area. I mean, maybe we have some. but uh, So it might be a big trip for a lot of people. But something to consider. If you're going to consider it, start considering it now. Make plans. Uh, it's it's going to be great. It's going to be epic. We're going to have it in Pla – well, we're not 100% sure on location, but uh, current thinking is in Plaza Serrano. It's a popular area in the heart of Buenos Aires in kind of like the uh, – near Palermo, Soho. It's like the kind of hip area of Buenos Aires. There's a, this plaza that everybody hangs out at. There's a bunch of uh, – bars around it and on the weekends they have a marketplace every weekend so we're going to try to tie into the plaza surround marketplace get them to accept monero for the weekend and then the conference will take place also kind of in the marketplace nearby we're renting out a bar restaurant with a kind of a second floor area where we'll be able to if everything works out uh you'll see the you know the um, the marketplace outside taking place. It should it should be cool. There's there's a big vision, um, and it seems to be coming together. We've had a good conversation with the owner of the bar. He seems very open and accommodating to our needs, and so we'll do it on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, the marketplace will be rocking. Hopefully, we have good weather. That's the that's kind of like the really the only thing that can go wrong. Um, although anybody who came to Mexico. No, you know, that was there. We did experience bad weather there, but uh, mm. but it was warm, so it wasn't too bad. I mean, obviously, yeah, obviously in Argentina, it'll it'll be it'll be warm as well. But it might, it might be. I don't know. I don't know if they're built to in Mexico. Like the, I don't know if you guys, uh, Red Tux, do you remember that when it when it poured and how the the marketplace kind of responded and they they kind of kept going. They had all their little tents. Yeah, up. I mean, we had that. Uh, we had that that uh that kind of dome right and that that worked yeah we had well. the, the dome was awesome that was epic we had it the rain coming well. down the thunder in the background and we had like the, the, the entire <laughs> monero panel up there that was like fantastic vibes but the the marketplace outside 
uh, I guess they're used to rain, rain, so they like kind of huddled down for like an hour, and then they just like reopened. But I'm not sure that this marketplace is as resilient as that one in Mexico. Uh, kind of a different style. So hoping we don't get rain. But other than that, it should be should be super cool, and we'll have the experience of the marketplace. Uh, plus the, the talks that will be taking place inside, everybody hanging out at the bar. Obviously, everything will be Monero-based. Um, so, yeah, if you want to buy a ticket, uh, I recommend jumping on that because we will slowly raise prices as we go. Um, VIPs, I don't know how many we're going to have. We haven't decided yet. It's going to kind of depend on the location. Um, and you know where we where we go for the speaker dinner that's the big thing the big difference between the vip vip ticket and anything else is the speaker dinner uh we'll select the location for that and i assume a lot of people are going to want to do that because it it ends up being a very nice party um and you'll hang out with all the speakers and everybody uh so hi highly consider that one if you're interested in that and grabbing it because we're gonna i'm sure have to limit it at some point the regular general admission we have listed for 89. Obviously, we try to keep it super cheap. The expense is going to be flying down there, right? Uh, but Argentina itself is very reasonable. Uh, if you've watched this show, you know that already. Uh, you know that, that crypto is big. It's it's naturally growing there in Argentina. So there, there's there's just so many reasons why we're doing it there. Um, so 89 bucks, and then if you're a local, 25 dollars, and we'll we'll keep that price at that price. Um, so anybody who can't afford the ticket or whatever is in the area has made their way to, to Buenos Aires to attend this. And if money is the issue, uh, just buy the, the $25 ticket. We try to get as many people involved as we can. And so this is also it's going to take place alongside La BitConf. Uh, the same time, same weekend, just in a different part of town. So anybody that goes to Monero Topia, uh, you, if you want, you can go visit La BitConf. You'll have to buy a ticket for that, but they're very reasonably priced as well. Oh, so is that the same be. time? Not like following? Yeah, it's a, no, we're going to do it during the same time because this marketplace is only open on the weekend. Um, so oh, I see. The thinking is people could still go Thursday to La BitConf. And, uh, you know, they could go back and forth. We're hoping that we get some La BitConf people to come check out Monerotopia as well. Especially because it's at Plaza cool. Serrano, and it's like a touristy thing to do anyway. Like, if you're going to Argentina, most people go visit Plaza Serrano anyway. Um, so we're thinking uh, if we get the word out to the La BitConf people, maybe they'll be stopping by the Monero marketplace to check it out. You know, we get, get a How nice How far is it from the La BitConf venue? Do you know? Uh, it's like a 15-minute cab ride. It's not bad. Buenos Aires is like is like New York City. So anything, even if it's oh, close, yeah. it's far. You know, it's just like the traffic and like it's a very it's a very busy t city. It's a tremendous city. Um, so it's actually pretty close. It's like a 15 minute cab, and the cabs are super cheap, very reasonably priced. And yeah, that, those strategy. are the details. That's kind of cool. Running it right along yeah. the side of the big conf. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, are, uh, does that yeah, does it yeah. sound I mean, sound? If it would have been cool if you could have ran it like right after, but like you said, that wasn't really an option. But yeah, no, I think I think doing yeah. it on the same weekend, yeah. you could potentially get a couple people to you know, a few people check it out at least. Maybe some people will come over for a day, whatever. Yeah, I think and you know we'll try to figure out how we can get the word out. Maybe we'll even have like a a stand at La Beckhoff, so we'll be there, like have somebody running a stand there. Um, and then kind of informing people about Monerotopia taking place, maybe. I don't know. It's an idea. Uh, and then we're probably going to have, probably some of the people that speak at Monerotopia are going to want to go and speak at LeBitConf as well. So we'll put them in touch with the LeBitConf people. I know they're probably going to want to, you know, uh, pill for some of our speakers, figure they're in town. And that will be good. That will be good for exposure for Monero. Um, maybe we'll get some talks taking place at LeBitConf that are Monero-related to cater to those people as well so that should be cool and yeah that's it it's, it's a long way off but it's gonna go fast it's already feels like it's coming fast for us so buy a ticket or more importantly reach out to us monerotopia at protonmail.com uh for any reasons regarding this conference if you live in argentina and you have ideas about it if you want to uh, come and be a vendor 
Um, obviously, so anybody that wants to come there and sell things for Monero, you know, we, we're not going to charge you for that. Like, just like with Monero Topia is a past. Um, if you want to come sell some product or, uh, you know, what, whatever it may be, you want to come participate in the Monero marketplace, we'll have a space for you. Um, people that do want to come and, you know, shill their products, uh, shill their, their services. If they're, if they're large companies, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be seeking, uh, sponsorships from, from those, from those people. But if you're, if you're small time and you're just looking to sell something Monero based, yeah, you're, you know, come for free, set up your stand. Um, we kind of had a whole Monero adoption alley last, last time. So any projects that, that fit into that realm come and we'll, we'll set you up. If you want to be a sponsor, hit us up. We're going to have the two stage sponsors and we're going to have the privacy tech sponsors. So hit us up for that. So the big, oh, that's also the big thing too, with this year. Sorry guys, I had to mute myself. Uh, this year we're going to be doing Copa Monero. So Tony, you want to scroll up to that? So as if Monero Topia wasn't enough. Uh, we're doing Copa Monero. It's a, a tournament, a soccer football tournament that's going to take place in Ibadete in Monero Town. Uh, Alessandro is working on that for us. It's going to be 12, I believe, 12 teams. Oh, wow. That play 15 Whoa. games. They're all oh local God. to the region. All the games are going to be played at the Copa Monero Stadium, at the Monero Town Stadium, uh, the Libertard Stadium. Um they're all going to be live streamed and we got like a, a professional, a company that does this professionally for, for leagues in Argentina. So it should be super cool. So all the games will be live streamed and they're going to take place over the course of, uh, I don't know, like six months leading up to the conference. And just, so it's just, I mean, you know, just a cool thing that we're trying to pull off. Um, and I think we'll get some, some good traction locally with Monero. I mean, this is going to be a big deal for their community. People are going to be coming out to the games. Um, they'll be filling the stadium. They may not know exactly what the hell's going on with regards to Monero. Why is it called Copa of Monero? But they're, but they're going to learn. And the word's going to spread that there's going to be a big Monero prize um, to the winner of the Copa is going to win a large Monero-based uh, award, the winning team. So that, so that should be cool. But I mention this now with Monerotopia because we're also we're trying to get this like sponsored as well, right? There's a lot of costs that come along with this. So anybody that sponsors Monero Topia, that's a, a large enough sponsor will also automatically be a sponsor of one of the 12 Copa Monero teams. And so as we play those games for the six months leading up to it, we'll sh you know, show your sponsorship and you'll help contribute towards making Copa Monero a thing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it for now. Obviously a lot more coming soon. Uh, but I think that's all we need to put out there for now. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> it already sounds... It's going to be really, it's going to be really cool. I mean, it's going to be great. It's, um, and yeah, for people, a lot of people who are on the fence about the distance, this is a great excuse to come down to Argentina. And uh, our, there's, there's some amazing things that are happening down there right now. If you are a libertarian, um, it's it's a, it's a great place. It's kind of like the mecca of, of one of the meccas right now. Places to li to to visit where liberty is blossoming, right? Uh, fingers crossed. But that appears to be the the case. With what's going on? So it'll be very exciting. Good excuse to come down there. If you're a steak eater, oh my god, well worth it right there. <laughs> you are <And> moving already. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be good. Uh, it'll be right before the holidays, too, so you could do your Christmas shopping, right? That's what I'm thinking, too, right? People can bring back all their Christmas gifts paid for with Monero at the Monero market. Um, and, and, and it's far enough away from MoneroCon that we won't conflict in any way. Uh, so that's, that was part of the goal, too, with doing it in November. How is, uh, how is November, um, like, season-wise in Argentina? Is it still pretty fairly warm? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hot. We were we were just there in November. Um, it's not like super hot. So it's probably it's, it's like hot. a pretty good time to do it better than the summer. Yeah, would be. 
Yeah, summer is like New York. It's like New York in in July, August. It's, it's really hot. The only thing is, in November though, you do you do you still get rain? You know, um, so that's the only issue. But I think we'll be able to contend with it. I'm sure. You know, worst case scenario, the conference would just continue in the bar restaurant, which is fine. Um, yeah, it should be good. That's it, guys. Oh, okay. That's all I got on Monerotopia. Monerotopia.com.